Some have called these difficult times and others uncertain times. Some have said that these are times of doubt and others have said these are peculiar times. How do we address this in the spiritual realm? Do we complain to God or do we trust God? What if our own spirituality is at risk? How do we maintain it in times where doubt creeps in? What is the underlying mystical message here? But dearest viewers, respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. We'd like to thank all the viewers for tuning in to this second show on the coronavirus. And thank you all for your messages last week in the first episode. Please do call in throughout the show after the break and send in your messages because they came in the thousands last week. And inshallah the Sayyid will answer your questions as many as he can. We pray for everyone out there. Everyone who suffered from this disease. Everyone who has lost a loved one in this disease. We pray that all of you receive the blessings of Muhammad and al-Muhammad and receive the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these difficult times. But without further ado, I'd like to welcome on Dr. Sayyid Amman al-Shawani. Sayyidna, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you doing today? Alhamdulillah, and I echo your words. We pray for everybody out there in these difficult times, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, inshallah. Now Sayyidna, straight off, this virus, is it all doom and gloom or is there a light at the end of the tunnel? No, I think as a, as a you know, faithful believer, a person will definitely believe that there's light at the end of the tunnel. And I think uh, we cannot classify this as all doom and gloom because I think there's many valuable lessons, I think, spiritually that have come out of this and that will continue to come out of this for those who want those lessons, for those who are looking for those lessons. I think first and foremost, to highlight that it's not all doom and gloom, we've come back to that realization that we are all equal. It doesn't matter what race you come from, it doesn't matter which culture you have. The world has now come back to a sense of recognition of the equality between one another. Because this disease or this virus, the coronavirus, is not discriminating between white and black. It's not discriminating between rich and poor, mm -hmm. educated or uneducated. You could be a star player for an Italian football team and you could be somebody who's a regular you know, blue collar worker in a company mm -hmm. and both of you can be affected. At moments like that, the one who's looking for a spiritual edge to their lives and looking for a rise in spiritual energy will suddenly reflect that, hold on a minute, did I think I was better than everybody else? Mm -hmm. Because I was earning more than everybody else or I studied somewhere more prestigious than somebody else. So on the first level, we have that. On the second level, I think there's also a realization that those who may have thought that their countries of origin mm -hmm. were better than, for example, the countries of origin of somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, some people may have thought or looked down, for example, at the Iranians. Mm -hmm. There may have been a period of time where they may have looked down at the Iranians and they may have thought that, what are these people? They're not mm. as advanced as us. Mm. They're not, for example, as equipped as us. And then all of a sudden you found countries who now that they've been affected by the coronavirus, it's as if it's humbled those countries. Mm. There are certain countries which no doubt believed that they were gods on earth. But now all of a sudden they've put their people in a state of lockdown and quarantine. Mm -hmm. If you truly were a god on earth, O Pharaoh, then you should be able to wave your magic wand and it would resolve all of these issues. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that those countries have now become humbled. At the beginning, those countries were mocking countries that were victims of the coronavirus or had victims of the coronavirus. For example, 
mocking countries like China mm -hmm. and bringing back old issues that they had with China, for example. Mm -hmm. And now you look at some countries and how humble these countries have become. Yeah. So that's the second area which I think highlights that don't look at this as doom and gloom. This is moments for us to sit back and actually begin to reflect on how we have built stereotypes, mm -hmm. prejudices, bigotry of different types. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, just how much of a risk, a form of sustenance, our health is in our lives. There are so many of us who looked at the word rizq monetarily all the time. To the extent that when someone asked you, or when someone said to you, may Allah increase your rizq, you always thought money. True. Now, you'd remove that money and you'd say that the greatest rizq you have, the greatest form of sustenance is our health. Yep. Look at the human being now. They're sitting back, bewildered. Mm -hmm. What's going on? I can't even touch, high five, hug, kiss those who I was so used to doing this to in my life on a regular basis, now I have to think twice. Because either I may hurt their health or their health may affect me. Mm. How much of a form of rizq is our health? When someone tells me coronavirus, all doom and gloom, I cannot deny that I empathize with those who have lost loved ones. Mm -hmm. But look at also the other benefits that have come out from these misfortunes. Mm -hmm. If a person is looking for spiritual benefits, another one is what? We are so worried about whether we'll live until tomorrow and yet have neglected about whether there is a life after we die. We plan for our tomorrow. Do you think I'll make it till tomorrow? Do you think the coronavirus is going to go tomorrow? What do you think? What shall we do? You know what, bro? Make sure tomorrow you get hand sanitizer. Make sure tomorrow you're buying food. Make sure you're stocking up. And how about after we pass away? Mm -hmm. After we pass away, there is this thing of the utmost importance that if after I die, what if there's a day of questioning, mm -hmm. a day of resurrection? You're planning for your tomorrow. How about for your hereafter? Mm -hmm. Who said that this is going to be the end? Who said that this world is going to be the end? We didn't even think we were coming into this world. Mm -hmm. So why should this be it? There's a great possibility that there's a day of resurrection. So again, we have on the fourth area. Another area is that it's made us reflect even on the food that we eat. Mm -hmm. How nutritious is this food that we eat? Mm -hmm. So all these different areas, I think, highlight that's not doom and gloom. And most importantly, it's rebuilt our relationship with God. Ascent. When we've rebuilt our relationship with God, which many of us had neglected, unfortunately, or many of us took that relationship for granted, or many of us have not even spoken to God as much as we've spoken to God recently, mm -hmm. how can it be all doom and gloom? Now, you mentioned God and... Um... Uh, you mentioned spirituality in your first point and the third point, talking about what we need to prioritize. But do we need to bring God into these discussions? God is central in all discussions, not just these. Uh -huh. We, the human being, we're possible existence. Mm. Everything revolves around the necessary existent. Mm. Hence, even in the whole discussion of the nature of existence in philosophy, the whole aim is to understand God and understand the soul and understand the world of good and bad, right and wrong. Mm -hmm. And so, for us, God is pivotal. Do you know why? Because we've realized that the human being is trying to use each other to find a solution. Mm -hmm. And we're still struggling. The human being thought they had reached a stage that science was the be-all and end-all. Mm -hmm. We had been at a time where the church was saying that they were the only way to God and the mosques were saying they were the only way to God. Mm -hmm. And then 
we decided that, you know what, separate the churches from our life, separate the mosques from our life. We have become enlightened. And the world of science is going to answer everything. And now we come back to square one. Yep. Well, we've realized, hold on a minute. Something so minor has got us into a state of bewilderment, mm. a state of confusion. And even the human being you want to call upon saying to you, don't come home, bro. Yeah, yeah, Your yeah. own family members. How many jokes have you seen go around in this period where people are trying to have some positivity and trying to smile? Mm. Where you have some people joking that, listen, the dads and moms are saying, listen, don't come near us. You're not our children anymore. Yeah, yeah. So the human being thought that, you know what? As long as we've got scientific apparatus, we've got the laboratories, that's enough for us. Mm -hmm. And now we've just realized that, you know what? We are only possible existence. We are subject to the laws of cause and effect, the laws of time and space. Eventually, we're going to all die and decay. And so definitely God becomes central in this period. And that's why you'll find that even those who did not have the strongest attachment with God are now asking questions concerning the meaning of this life, mm -hmm. the purpose of this life. Where are we heading? What do we do at this moment? There's no way that a person can escape that much from their primordial nature. Yes, I appreciate that. There are some people who don't want to believe in God because of the way certain religious people have behaved or the hypocrisy of some of the religious. Yep. Because some of the most judgmental are the religious. Mm -hmm. And the best in backbiting are the religious. And the ones who always make negative comments always look religious. Mm -hmm. True? Yep. Do you agree? Very true. Very true. I they agree. look religious, but they're the most negative. They always like to poke mistakes at people. But I they're can, religious. I can think of a few, yeah. A few? There's more <laughs> than a few. And so what you have, therefore, is that this period, no doubt, we, we, we return to God and God becomes central in our discussions. But you mentioned, you mentioned science. I mean, that's, that's all beautiful and all. But you mentioned science. Um, we're Muslims. There are atheists going through all of this as well. How, how does our world view differ from those who do not believe in God? Well, on this issue of the coronavirus, mm -hmm. if I don't believe in God, then, and I have a world view which is purely material, then I look at what's happening with the deaths and I just say survival of the fittest. That's it. People die. Because if you're looking at this world view, which is purely material, with certain social, biological, evolutionary mm -hmm. trends from a couple of hundred years back, then really what you're looking at is, okay, this incident, people are dying in Italy, survival of the fittest. People are dying in China, survival of the fittest. Yeah, it's okay, it's, it's sad, but survival of the fittest. Mm -hmm. People die in Iran, survival of the fittest. An atheist worldview Forget the relativity of some of the moral conclusions. Mm. It's a worldview where we are all really animals in a circus. The lights will be switched off one day, and that's it. It ends. There's no real purpose or no real aim mm -hmm. or no real conception of a day of accountability or resurrection. And so human beings have evolved. And now we've reached a stage where some are not as powerful as others. Mm -hmm. And now it's survival of the fittest. I don't know why an atheist would be so, so sad with what's happening. Because in your worldview, we are a bunch of animals. And some of us are stronger than others and can survive maybe more years than others. And that's it. So someone says, okay, so what's your worldview then? With the coronavirus, if you're a believer in God, my worldview is a worldview of hope. Mm -hmm. A recognition that there are those who have come before me. Russell Brand discussed this wonderfully when he said that those who have a relationship mm -hmm. with the ancient traditions, with the sacred traditions, will know of the fact that you're going to go through trials, tribulations. But there is hope, there is light at mm -hmm. the end of the tunnel. There's a connection with God where you know when it's at the most difficult mm -hmm. that there is that hope. And many who have come before us have been through quarantine, 
social confinement. Mm -hmm. They've been through the most difficult circumstances, losing their wealth, losing their health. But their trust in God is what got them through. Mm -hmm. So in an atheist worldview, and I remember mentioning this on, in my discussion of the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. I had said that yeah. in an atheist worldview, it was just, you know what? Hitler was more powerful and he killed anyone who got in his way. Be it the Jewish community, be it the communist community, be it those who had a particular gender orientation or, you know, for example, uh, you know, be it others who disagreed with him and they got in his way and he killed them. But in a worldview of God, there's a recognition that there is a day of justice. Mm -hmm. If not in this world and the hereafter, there is a recompense for those who were killed unjustly mm -hmm. and oppressed. And so when you're looking at the difference between an atheist worldview and the worldview where God is the center, mm. the atheist worldview will just look at all of this and say, listen, it's survival of the fittest. If you're not fair enough, then leave. I know there may be some atheists out there who might turn around and say, well, you don't understand. I shed tears for those people. No, I'm not talking about your personal shedding of tears. You're a mm. human being like I'm a human being. Yeah, fair enough. Um, but in the worldview, no. Worldview survival of the fittest. Whereas you would think that in the God centric worldview and i'm not saying all those who are god centric necessarily have reached that level of spirituality where they submit to god's will and they're not affected by for example moments of grief or despair or despondency mm -hmm. that can happen yeah but a person who holds on to the lord will have seen enough pieces of literature that holding on to the lord will get you through this period but i'll say that you you mentioned hope and rightfully you know you know, our path is a path of hope. Um, we've seen, we've seen SARS, we've seen the swine flu, okay, but we've never seen a virus in our day and age like the coronavirus, COVID-19. And you're seeing, you know, Italy, China, Iran, the UK, uh, many countries all over the world, they're at an all-time low, okay? Now, what example can you, of hope can you give them? I think it's when you're at your all-time low, Mm. and it's the, your most difficult moment then that's where your hope in God will definitely find its fruits at that moment is when God opens the doors for you if you look for example in the Quran Moses is going through a period of difficulty mm -hmm. he's got his family with him and if we put the metaphor of darkness because this seems to be a period of gloom and the mm -hmm. word dark and gloomy is all being used everywhere in discussions. Mm -hmm. Moses alayhi salam is going through a period of darkness. Yeah. He's actually walking in a land of darkness. Mm -hmm. It's also difficult times for him because he's away from his origin, original land. And so what you have is that when you're at that particular stage and you think that you know what, there's no more hope. Mm. And we've reached a level of despair. It was at that moment that God gave him the greatest blessing you can ever have. You see that fire mm. come towards it. The fire symbolized the light for him. Yeah. In the middle of that darkness, mm -hmm. there was light. Mm -mm -mm -mm. At Beautiful. the end of the tunnel, there is a light. light. Yeah. That example always sticks with me because it was that moment when going through trials and tribulations and your Iman is being tested that all of a sudden God says, you see that fire? Mm -hmm. There is a glimmer of hope. There is that light. And he gave him his greatest blessing, which was, now speak to me, O Musa. SubhanAllah. Someone, if they looked at Musa from far away, would say, poor Moses. He was a person who had to leave Egypt he was someone accused of something which he did not commit. People did not know the context of what was happening. He had to wander into a foreign land, of course, until he met Nabi Shu'aib alayhi salam. But then, when you're going through all of these difficulties, God says, don't worry. And truly, it's at the edge. When you're on the edge and you're thinking, is there any more? Mm -hmm. Difficulties that we can go through, that connection with God suddenly opens those doors. Mm -hmm. Now, Sayyidina, um, the famous verse uh, that we recite at the end of each majlis, I'm sure the viewers got it straight away as soon as I said it. Uh, chapter 27, verse 62. Verse 62 um, 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء and the verse continues now it says in the translation بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم is he not best who responds to the desperate one when he calls upon him and removes evil and makes you inheritors of the earth is there a deity with Allah little do you remember now the state of being مضطر you know sometimes the the human being is um, is at an all time low where you know they turn around they look around and uh, there's no one there's no one that they can turn the, themselves to there's no one that they they can look to uh, to help them now this state of being mudhtar could you explain that to me and the viewers please is there ever a time when we're not mudhtar fair enough fair i enough. think spiritually speaking Mm-hmm. One of the highest levels of spirituality is to admit, in reality, we're always in a state of desperation. Mm-hmm. Some desperate to know their Lord, some desperate to connect to their Lord, some just recognizing that the human being in relation to God is always in a state of desperation. Yeah. Who is there to answer the one who is in that state of desperation mm-hmm. when they supplicate? And may you jibul mustar ida da'a. There are some who are in a state of desperation but don't call out to their Lord, mm-hmm. don't speak to their Lord. There are others, whatever you put us through, while we have God, we will continue to talk to Him. Mm-hmm. Now, a person can be mustar physically, a person can be mustar spiritually. Mm-hmm. Physically, I may be facing a situation now where physically, I find that I'm facing difficulties, Mm -hmm. I'm desperate. Who is there to answer my call? There are some who can try and answer this call, where all of us are in desperate times with this virus, Mm -hmm. where we're wondering, okay, what's going to happen? How long is this going to last for? Because Mm -hmm. there are people who financially are in trouble. There are people who are wondering about their elders and what their elders are going through. Mm-hmm. Who is there other than Allah to answer the call of the one who is in a desperate situation when they call upon Allah? Allah. Yeah. I'm telling you, if there was a human being out there who has this vaccine, I'd call upon them right now. <laughs> Honestly, I'd call upon them and I'd say that, listen, I beg you, sort this out. Mm-hmm. There are people who are dying, who are innocent, who have not done anything wrong. Mm-hmm. There are people out there who all of a sudden cannot afford even the medical means that are required and that mm-hmm. are necessary. And then I've got people turn around to me and say there could be a vaccine in Germany. No, there isn't. It could be in America. We're not sure. It has to be tested on this animal. We're not sure. Mm-hmm. It may have to be tested a number of times. We're not sure. Who is there other than Allah to answer the call of the one in desperation when they call upon him? All of these, they're human beings like me and you. As much as I want them to help me, they themselves are struggling in desperate times. So this verse, without a doubt, is a verse that we all need to recite in these times. Mm -hmm. Because all of us are in a desperate stage. You know, being isolated in the house can cause people mental health difficulties. Mm -hmm. There are some who, when isolated at home, can resort to the drink. Mm -hmm. I'd be worried if within a few months we may find cases of suicide where people have realized that their repayments cannot be made. And may you jibu al-muftar. This difficulty that you go through, mm-hmm. who is there to answer that call yeah. of the one who's desperate? That's Except right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in these times, without a doubt, while we aren't facing desperation, it's not the time for a person to give up or a person to be in a state of despair. Rather, it's a case where a person now opens the path of talking to their Lord. I sent, and I'd like to remind the viewers that please do send in your questions. Uh, they are coming in. Uh, we will be going through them, me and the say during the break. Um, but saying that at this difficult, difficult moment in time, where does the Imam of our time come in? Well, I think, um, you know, I think 
You call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no doubt. Mm. But this is the moment to build the connection with the Imam of our time as well. You know, many of us may say, Ya Ali Madad. Mm -hmm. But not many of us say, Ya Mahdi Madad. Mm -hmm. And I think without a doubt in these times is when a person builds the connection with the Imam of their time. Mm -hmm. The Imam is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this earth for us. He is the hujjah of Allah on this earth for us. Build that connection. At this stage, make use of every connection you have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Ahsan, Ahsan. And um, uh, like you rightly mentioned, that we do need to build a connection with the Imam of our time. But saying that, moving, uh, I want to move to the Prophets of Allah because I think they're, you know, the Prophets in the Quran, they're key for us to live our lives. Now, have there been any Prophets who let's say, have had an illness and they face the trial with their family in the way we are facing right now? Well, I think the classic example one would find in the Holy Quran, considering the context is the coronavirus, mm. you're looking in the Quran and most probably the, the steadfastness that Prophet Ayyub exhibits in the Quran is something quite phenomenal because at this stage, he is a, a wealthy landowner Mm. A healthy landowner, a father, and a respected individual in society. Mm -hmm. I think many people who are in a state of desperation at the moment mm -hmm. are people who fit these categories. Mm -hmm. They're either a parent who has a certain amount of wealth but is uncertain where this wealth is heading, mm -hmm. may own a house but is uncertain or uncertain about the repayments on this house, yep. and are in what they thought was the best state of health and now are uncertain about their state of health. Mm -hmm. So who do you hold on to? You have to hold on to the sacred traditions now. Mm -hmm. Spirituality and my connection with the Lord, part of it is I follow the example of those whom the Lord has blessed. Hence in, in Surah Al-Fatiha, what do we say in the opening chapter of the Quran? Ahdina as-sarat al Mustaqim. Sarat al and Amta alayhim. Guide me on the straight path, the path of those you have blessed. blessed. Nabi Ayyub alayhi salam is part of the path of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed. In which sense? In that Nabi Ayyub alayhi salam, you find that Nabi Ayyub alayhi salam is someone who has wealth, someone who has good health, someone who has children. Mm -hmm. Someone who's very highly respected, all of the priests of that time also very highly respected him mm -hmm. and respected his wife, respected his whole family in fact. And yet what you find with Nabi Ayyub is that he faces this very difficult moment where Satan has this discussion with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when he has this discussion with the Lord, the discussion involves the fact that Ayyub is grateful in every difficulty. Mm -hmm. Shukr. Gratefulness, gratitude and thankfulness is vital to our spiritual health as human beings. There are some human beings when you do anything, they'll say, you know what, thank you for making an effort. There are other human beings, no, it's always negativity. Yep. You want to see someone's spirituality. Mm -hmm. The spirituality is on how grateful they are and how thankful they are for what they have. Mm -hmm. Maybe we as a society lost that thankfulness. Mm. Maybe we took our freedom of thought, freedom of education, freedom to work, freedom to vote, and we took it for granted. Yeah. There's no more. And if you want to know what makes you lose blessings is when you stop praising the Lord and stop thanking the Lord. Mm. There are many of us who would wake up, not even a hint of Alhamdulillah would come out of our mouth after having just slept six, seven, eight hours. Mm -hmm. Where's the hamd gone? Where's the shukr gone? Mm -hmm. When a person, for example, has bought a house, has bought a nice car, the hamd and shukr went. When a person acquired a good job, the hamd and shukr went. And it's not just Muslims. The Christian community, Jewish community, other religions. Maybe we became people who were lacking in gratitude. Mm -hmm. Not thankful. Ayyub alayhi salam would be thankful to God in every situation. Whatever, if he had a child, alhamdulillah, thank the Lord. This is all from the Lord. Wealth, he thanked the Lord. Good health, he thanked the Lord. His wife, he's grateful to the Lord. 
Satan couldn't believe how a human being could be grateful for absolutely everything. Because normally the human being is what? They say the word insan, mm -hmm. nisyan, forgets. We forget. There are days, where days on end, where we forget Allah's blessings on us. Mm -hmm. Salah, five times a day, what's its benefit? Is to build a conscience and a sense of gratitude. Mm -hmm. And not forget the gifts that the Lord has given us. Satan loves no, nothing more than somebody who is ungrateful. That's a soldier of shaitan. <laughs> ungrateful. Yeah. God gives them a house, not grateful enough. God gives them family, still not grateful. God gives them good health, still not grateful. God gives them education, still not grateful. Always find something to complain about. Satan couldn't believe how Ayyub, or as we know him in English, Job, was always grateful for everything. But Satan said something interesting. He said, take his kids away from him. Take his job away in terms of wealth. Take his health away. He won't thank you anymore. Because the human being also has another side. Which is the human being, when things are going well, is thankful. Yeah. When things aren't going well, they start making excuses for not getting up to pray. Mm -hmm. Why should I fast? Why did God do this to me? Mm -hmm. Satan said, I guarantee you the moment Job loses everything, you'll see there is no more gratefulness. Mm -hmm. All of us are wondering about our health now. This is when we all become a yub. Mm. When we say we all become a yub, we all want to go back towards the Lord through the example of a man who when his health deteriorated, got closer to God, not further away. Mm. You'd think that he should go further away. No, he got closer to God. They took away his wealth. Down in sujood, shukr. In prostration. They took away his children. They died in a fire. Mm. Thanking God. When they took his health away, his wife got baffled. Why is this happening? There are some wives who are now with their husbands, husband to their wives, why is this happening? What's going on? Are we going to lose each other? Will we ever see our kids again? Yeah. Will our kids ever come and visit our house again? Nabi Ayyub turned around and said something to his wife. God's been good to me, say, for 80 years of my life. If he wants to test me for 10, then why not? Any human being spiritually, you want to get the highest level, you have to go through a few tests. Show me the best captain of a ship, I'll tell you he had to go through a few storms. Mm -hmm. Show me the best pilot, I'll tell you that there had to be some turbulent moments in his flying. Yep. Show me the best general in war, he'll tell you about some wars where he just about escaped, but it taught him the skills of lasting mm -hmm. in the battlefield. Ayub said, if my Lord wants this, then so be it. I'm thankful to my Lord. Mm -hmm. The message from Prophet Ayyub wasn't just sabr. Normally we say sabr Ayyub. Not just that. لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Be grateful. I'll keep giving you. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. And number three, sabr, shukr. If I'm going to take something away from you, it belonged to me anyway. You were a custodian for a certain time. I may take it back. Not easy, by the way. This taslim mm -hmm. to God's will. It's not easy. Yeah. But Nabi Ayyub alayhi salam, what was wonderful about him was that when his health deteriorated, there were people around him who didn't even want to see him anymore. There were some who even questioned his prophethood. Oh. How, if you're a prophet, how comes you're being tested with your health? Whoever you are, Allah will give you a test with your health mm -hmm. or with your wealth or with your children. Mm. At the end, because he's so grateful to the Lord, the Lord gives him back his health. The Lord highlights to us that even when you're tested with your health, hang in there. Yeah. Trust me. And you'll see that it was just something that managed to maybe 
wake up those of you who became negligent mm -hmm. or build your spirituality. Yeah. Ayub says to God, I thanked you in every moment, even when I lost my health, I lost my kids, I lost my wealth, I thanked you in every single moment. Mm -hmm. Is that sufficient? He said, Ayub, you can never thank me enough. Because even the word thank you is a gift from me. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Even if I say shukr to Allah, that's mm. still a gift from Allah, that word. Yeah. And so if there's an example in the Quran that I feel everyone has to hold on to in this time, it's the fact that if a ma'soom prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can go through difficulties with their health, so can we. But what was his reaction? Mm. Was it yes? Was it qunut? Was it despair? Was it despondency? Or was it tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ahsan Sayyidina, thank you very much. That answer there, although it enlightened, opened so many avenues. Um, we will go for a short break, inshallah. Uh, do stay tuned for the next part and send in your questions during the break, inshallah. Me and the we'll go through them and uh, answer as many as we can. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. The Ziyarat Ashura recitation campaign for the relieving from various kinds of disasters and diseases. Mam Hussein Media Group invites all the believers all around the world, men and women, to join this campaign and supplicate the Almighty Allah, as well as resorting to the gate of salvation of Mam Hussein, peace be upon him. Join this campaign by reciting Ziyarat Ashura daily and intending Imam Sahib Zaman's safety and his reappearance to be hastened. You can simply join this campaign by sending the words Ziyarat Ashura and your name through WhatsApp to the Public Relations Department of Imam Hussain TV and start reciting Ziyarat Ashura for 40 days continuously. You can also invite others to join this campaign and give them the opportunity of joining this universal resorting to Imam Hussain peace be upon him. Mamun Hussain Media Group, Public Relations Number, plus 964-774-067-1837. We all have a duty towards the preservation and the propagation of the message of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Indeed, one of the best ways to work towards the reappearance of Imam al-Mahdi Ajalallah ta'ala Farajul Sharif is through promoting the values of Karbala. Imam Hussain Media Group is the only Shia television network that broadcasts globally in five different languages, Arabic, Farsi, Turkish, Urdu, and English. We are appealing to the lovers of Imam Hussain alayhi salam worldwide to support the channel such that it may continue its global operations. Imam Hussain Media Group is seeking 1,000 partners to pledge to a 14 pound contribution per month. This will allow the channel to sustain its operating costs as we continue to spread the message of Imam Hussain alayhi salam in multiple languages across the globe. You be a part of this great legacy and donate today. You can pledge in two ways. www.imamhussain3.tv slash donate will take you direct to our donation page where you can pledge monthly. Or you can call or WhatsApp us on 0044-793-991763. Imam Hussain TV, your gateway to Karbala.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to this live show, the second part for the coronavirus. Uh, we do send our deepest heartfelt condolences to everyone who's been affected by this and our hearts are with uh, those who have lost a loved one or who are still affected uh, by this virus. Um, before the break we were discussing whether this was all doom and gloom, um, whether there was any examples of the of prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran who have been affected by this. Um, if you remember before the break, Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam, who was affected by uh, uh, a disease, and he said, if Allah tests me for, if Allah's blessed me for 80 years, why doesn't he test me for 10 years? Why not? Um, do send in your questions to the WhatsApp. We have many, many coming through. Me and the Sayyid did uh, look at uh, a few, to, and we picked out a few to ask at the end of the show. Um, but Sayyidna, back to our discussion. Um, despair and despondency. Our community is full. The world is full. Full. In Islamic ethics, how do we view such states? Yeah, despair and despondency, as you could see, there's a lot of people now really in a state of despair. Mm -hmm. There's people who are in a state of being despondent at the same time. Um, and this has a major place in discussions, especially in Islamic ethics. In Arabic, the word for despair is the word yes. Mm -hmm. And in Arabic, the word for despondency is qunut. Mm -hmm. Now, one may ask the question, when, someone's, when you say about someone that they are despondent and you say about someone that they're in a state of despair, mm. firstly, how great are these sins? These are major sins, by the way. Uh -huh. okay. In Islam, to be in a state of despair and to be in a state of despondency are amongst the greatest sins that anyone can ever perform. In the book, The Greatest Sins, the author lists them as number two and number three in the rank of the greatest sins in Islam. Number one, we all agree, shirk. Do we agree? Yeah. I think every one of the viewers out there will say that the first greatest sin that anyone can perform mm -hmm. is shirk. And yeah. the clear answer for shirk is the fact that it is the only sin that you cannot be forgiven for mm -hmm. on the day of judgment if you die in a state of being a mushrik, mushrik a yeah. polytheist. You could be a mushrik in the sense that you believe in one God but you've put idols to that God. Mm -hmm. Or you could be a mushrik in the sense that you believe in more than one God. God. Okay. Then the second greatest sin is despair and the third greatest sin is despondency. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between the two? Both of them have this sense of a negative outlook on what's happening in life. Mm -hmm. An outlook of someone who's lost and most importantly an outlook of someone who has subjected the Creator to the world and the laws of the created. What do I mean? The when a person is in a state of despair, do you know what type of things they say? I'm going to burn in hell. No one's going to stop it. No one's going to change it. You sometimes hear people yeah, like, yeah, you I've know what, bro? It. I've done so much haram. I'm definitely going to hell. Uh -huh. No one can change me. No one can change you, you may be right. I might not be able to change you, my majalis might not be able to change you, other speakers' majalis might not be able to change you. Who's above us and who created us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if he wants to give hidayah, can he? Of course. So when you say that no one can change me, what are you then doing to the Lord? You're subjecting the Creator to the laws of the created. Ahsan. Therefore, a mu'min will never ever be someone who is in a state of yes. Mm. Because a mu'min saw a virgin give birth. 
Yeah. The Lord who can break the laws of science and allow Mary to give birth to Christ when no man has touched her. How can you doubt that that Lord can change your situation in one second? Mm -hmm. If your Lord wants in Kun Fayakun, this whole virus is finished. Yeah. Someone in a state of despair saying, even God can't do anything about this. No. Now, despondency and despair, despondency, when you have the feelings inside you and you bring them out. Despair, you keep them inside you until they eat away at you. Uh -huh. And okay. eat away until your mental health mm. is in a very dangerous moment. Now, what's the difference again? Let's go further. Say inside myself, I'm like, you know what? This is not going well. This coronavirus is probably going to kill me. You know what? No one can help me. That's it. I'm ruined. This is the end of life. This is the signs mm. of the day of judgment. That's it. You know what? That's it. But I don't say it to anyone. I keep it inside. That's despair. Mm. Despondency is when I tell everyone, you know what? I'm ruined. That's it. I've committed so many sins. It's the end of my life. Don't tell me Jannah. Don't tell me Dua. That's it. It's over. Two out of three are the greatest sins in the religion of Islam. How could you as a Muslim who has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at a problem and say that it's bigger than Allah when you should tell the problem, have you met my Allah? Subhanallah. Hassan. When I see a problem out there, that problem that's out there it's telling me I'm going to finish you. You're nothing. Mm. I reply to it. Have you met my Lord? If I have Iman, then I look at any difficult moment. I'm like, you haven't met my Lord, have you? Because mm. you met my Lord. Fire normally burns a human. But he told fire, be cold. Be peaceful for Abraham. If you met my Lord, I don't know if you've met my Lord, but my Lord humbled Pharaoh who was so powerful and made him drown in the sea like he had never ever known what it meant to swim. You've not met my Lord, have you? My Lord's the one who said, it's easy for me to allow Maryam to give birth to Christ. Have you not met my Lord who was able to take the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, above the seventh heavens and more, to two bows of an arrow or nearer, in a moment where no time could come and get in his way. A person who's in the world of despair and despondency with this coronavirus issue has not understood fully what is Allah, what is God. I'm not going to despair. Yeah. I've got God. And if this is his plan, it's always wonderful. It's a lovely artwork. It's got sadnesses on the way. Mm -hmm. But there are others who face sadnesses as well. But I've got full trust in my Lord. Yeah. And I know that everything my Lord does is for my benefit. Inna Allah la yadlimu mithqala dharra. Mm. Allah does not even oppress an atom's weight. Dhahar al fasad there's certainly been corruption from our hands mm -hmm. and maybe the way we've treated the earth yeah. the way we've treated the plant kingdom the animal kingdom maybe this was a wake up call to us that if you all truly claim to love me how could you do that to my creation so in the Quran for example when you came to despondency you sometimes have people who are like, you know, this coronavirus, I'm going to die. I'm such a sinner. Allah will never forgive me. Ya ibadi alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim. La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Inna Allah ya ghafiru al-dhunuba jami'an. Innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. O my servants who have been extravagant against their souls, do not be in a state of despondency. La taqnatu. Mm-hmm. You may have la ta'asu, you may have la taqnatu. Mm -hmm. La taqnatu are those who are publicly saying, nothing's going to change, we're going to die, it's the end of the world, no one's going to help us. La ta'asu is 
those people who, for example, have it inside them, but they're not coming out with it. Mm -hmm. Both are great sins. Because both are now saying, you know what, you Allah, you can't even sort this out. And that after shirk is the worst state you can be in. Mm. And there's no need to be in that state. My brothers and sisters, there's no need. Do you know what one of the benefits you said in the beginning of the show, is it all gloom and doom? Mm. Or is it all doom and gloom? You know what one of the benefits are? We now know where we all are spiritually. Two months ago, we were more concerned where we all were physically. Bro, you signed up with the gym. Yeah. Bro, have you signed up for the gym? Bro, what are you lifting these days? Yeah. Bro, have you seen that supplement? Bro, what shall I do? I need my calves to look bigger. Bro, what shall I do? I need a six pack. Bro, how do I work on my shoulders? Mm -hmm. Now, do you know why it's not all gloom and doom? Now we know the real state of ourselves as human beings. Spiritually, where are we? Awesome. Has this rocked us where our iman is finished? Or have we realized that our iman is at a good state? A six out of 10? A very good state? An eight out of 10? Or at a 10 where we're like, bring it on. Ya Allah, your plan is wonderful. <laughs> and if this is your plan, then so be it. Yeah. We the humans may have neglected. So we should never fall into that state of despair or despondency. Mm. al yas and the Qunut, these are areas you don't want to fall in. If you are, then come back towards an understanding that your Lord is above all. My cheeks are hurt from smiling. But you talked about the despair, um, how it eats you from the inside and affects your mental illness. Now, is, Sayyidina, is there... Any Islamic um, psychology which would help in this situation with people with despair where they have a mental illness eating them inside? The problem in the world of psychology now, modern day psychology just discusses abnormalities. Mm. Spiritual psychology will provide you with an ethical blueprint mm -hmm. as well as a blueprint for the soul. Psychology for us, the soul is central. Modern day psychology, even, you know, the disregard of metaphysics mm -hmm. and the study of metaphysics and modern day psychology, just studying abnormalities. Islamic psychology would put the soul at the center and show you what are the diseases, mm -hmm. how do you overcome them, mm -hmm. and how do you progress with certain divine attributes and characteristics. I do believe we need more people who are experts in Islamic psychology or spiritual psychology. But I think certainly you see some of the ethical treaties, I would say, are the closest that have been written, which discuss despair, despondency, discuss, for example, areas such as discipline, trustworthiness, patience, steadfastness. Because mm -hmm. this is what you're all looking at, the different facets of the soul. The soul mm -hmm. can sometimes be in a state of ammara, the soul can be looked at vegetative or, you know, animalistic or the rational animal and you want to see where you are. Mm. So you're absolutely right that there is a need for an Islamic psychology or a spiritual psychology more than ever before. Because people at the moment, because of mental health issues, aren't certain how to overcome some of the crisis that they face spiritually. Mm. Let alone physically where there are experts on that field. And I'm hearing more and more that recently there are more members of our community who are going into this area of looking at spiritual psychology. Now, saying that we, you know, even those who don't have the symptoms, even those who aren't affected, you know, everyone's being quarantined. Everyone's told to self-isolate. It's, it's like we're being imprisoned in our own homes. Now, how is it that, you know, that we should react to, to being ordered to stay at home? I mean, it's like social confinement. I feel like it's like real life hell. Is there any hope? Yeah, make, make use of, um, of the door that's been opened for you to talk to God now. Mm. You're in your room. Yeah. You're confined. Open up. Mm. When Imam Musa al-Kadhim alayhi salam, who we all commemorated his martyrdom yes, a few sir. days ago. Yeah. When Harun Rashid put Imam Musa al kadhim in prison, mm -hmm. prison, lockdown, isolation, quarantine, all these words, I always say, hold on to Bab al Hawaj. Mm. Hold on to Imam Musa al kadhim alayhi salam. Because of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, 
over a period of 10 to 15 years, you've got a man who went to prison four times. Mm. And when he entered prison, he says something which I think we should all make use of. Mm. Oh Allah, all my life I've asked you to give me the chance to worship you alone. Mm. Thanks for the chance. Thanks for that honor. You'd think that when someone is put somewhere socially confined, they cannot go out, they don't have that freedom, they would complain to Allah. Why? Why? He said, no, no, now. I'm not as busy as I used to be. You don't have to go to work. They said there's a clamp down. They said they lock down. Now's my chance to open up to Allah, rebuild my relationship with Allah. Now someone might say, how would you rebuild your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Salah is obvious. Yeah. Maybe now rebuild the praying on time in contrast to the past where because you are at work so much, your dhuhr and asr some days was missed, some days was prayed with five minutes left before Maghrib and Isha. Your Maghrib and Isha was prayed when you came back from a dinner meeting very late. Mm -hmm. Now I can talk to Allah. I have no excuse to say, well, you don't know how busy it was and the phone wouldn't stop ringing and the customers wouldn't, keep coming, wouldn't stop coming in. Now I've got that chance. Mm -hmm. Secondly, maybe work on certain mustahabat. Mm -hmm. What an honor and what a plan, Ya Allah that you decided that we would all go through this in the months of Rajab and Sha'ban where we can all return back to you. Mm. How many mustahabad there are in those months? So many. Yeah. Now that we're at home, we can fast. At the moment, for example, you break your fast, let's say at 6.35 mm -hmm. and you don't have to go to work in some cases, so you're waking up maybe a bit later than normal. Mm -hmm. Make use of the chance to discipline that soul and that body. Mm. Fasting doesn't just discipline the soul. Disciplines your body as well yeah, yeah, yeah. by fasting. Number three, open up books that you haven't ever opened up, but they've sat nicely on your shelves. Collected dust. Collected dust, but now open them up. Mm -hmm. There are some great books available and many Muslim households that I've been to always have had those books but people always say to me, look, I start the first 20 pages but I never finished it. I start the first 30 pages of that but look, Allah has given us a wonderful chance. Mm. Open those books. Ascent. Maybe sit down and spend time with your children. There are many who, for example, don't have time to sit with their children actually sit with them and ask them questions regarding their development both socially and religiously. Imam Musa al taught us whatever type of prison the world makes for you, you can always make it a place where you're free. You can build your own environment. And if there's ever an Imam we can take an example from, it's the Imam alayhi salam. Ahsan Sayyidina. Now what Sayyidina, you know, we love us, we love the Majalis. Um, in such times, a lot of people lose their taqwa and you know they feel distant religiously because there's no more star holding programs um do you have a verse or a line that could give us hope you know would you prescribe anything for us firstly there uh, there are many mosques in the world who have online live majalis mm -hmm. and i think another blessing spiritually is that we can now sit with our families and watch these online majalis at home. Don't get me wrong. There's no buzz like being in the mosque. There's absolutely no buzz like being in the mosque. But now sit down, have your son or daughter next to you, have your wife next to you, yeah. and watch the lecture together, maybe discuss it afterwards. Imam Hussain TV has got a lot of lectures online. Imam Hussain TV has got a lot. There are many channels and there are many online Lectures from the mosques which are being broadcasted live. Nobody should have an excuse by saying, you know, because the mosque is closed, I was not able to go for this wilad and shahada because there are a number of mosques online who have live lectures. For example, with us at the Haidari Islamic Center, yep. we have lectures live for every occasion. Mm -hmm. A person tunes in, is able to watch the wilad and shahada. Yesterday was the Amal of the 27th of Rajab, the Mab'ath of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. And so, this is available for people. Now, if you're sitting at home and 
There are people, by the way, who wouldn't have gone to the mosque anyway, even if the mosque was available. They didn't know it was Abu Talib's wafat. They did not know it was Imam Musa al-Kadhim's. They did not know it was the Mab'ath. And probably this week, there are some who don't know it's Imam al-Hussein or Imam Zain al-Abdin or Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. They would not have gone to the mosque even if the mosque was open. Yeah. But now make use of it. Maybe it's an eye-opener for you now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you this other chance that look, when the mosques were open, you weren't attending. Now that there's live online majalis, listen to those majalis. Those who say that my taqwa is diminishing, always remember the ayah in the Quran, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whoever is conscious of Allah's presence in their life, mm. Allah will open all the doors for them. Mm. Taqwa requires exercise. Yep. The same way your body, mm. you need to keep up with the gym. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the soul requires exercises. Exercise was there for us on a plate with majalis. Yeah. That was the greatest spiritual exercise we had for our souls. Mm -hmm. But now work on other areas. Now, because of this situation, work on reading a book on that person whose life you were going to listen to a lecture on that night. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Or there is a catalogue of past lectures. Mm. So, a person should never start saying that, you know what, my taqwa is diminishing. There are many resources available to ensure that the exercises continue. And that's why, if I bring the metaphor again about fitness and working out, there are a lot of people who were used to five to seven days a week in the gym. Mm -hmm. Now, all the gyms are closed. So what are they doing? Are they just sat home and said, you know what, now that I'm not going to the gym, that's it. I'm not going to work out anymore. They could easily turn around and say that. Yes. The same way someone could say, well, the fact that there's no majalis anymore, my taqwa is diminishing. No. Get the app. They get an app. And on that app, it tells them, do these exercises at home. Mm -hmm. Do this number of press-ups. Do that number of sit-ups. Mm -hmm. Do these burpees. Why? Because just keep yourself maintained. maintained. Yeah. No one's saying that anything can replace the recipe of Majalis al Hussein alayhi mm salam. -hmm. You can't replace that. No, no. The buzz of Masaib or the fervor of Fadail, mm -hmm. you could not replace that. No one's saying that your house is going to be the same as that private gym that you go to. Mm -hmm. But you can work on that environment. Yeah. And those spiritual exercises, inshallah, will maintain that taqwa. And we say, أَمَّا يُجِيبُ الْمُفْطَرِ إِذَا دَعَوَا إِشْرُفْ سُوءَ And then, hopefully all will be clear. Now, Sayyidina, I, I know you know this, and some of the viewers know this, but when, for example, when we want to do something and say, tawakkal or tawakkal عَلَى Allah, You know, tawakkul, what, what does tawakkul mean? You know, can, can you define that for us? And tawakkul, take out of it, wakala or wakil. Always remember this. Okay. If you're going to give a lecture, and I know you've given lectures and you're a budding speaker, Alhamdulillah, we're very proud of you. And all the you. other budding speakers out there, always with the word tawakkul, mm. which we normally translate as trust, yeah. remember the words wakala or wakil. Now, when you're getting married, you want a, a wakil. Yep. That wakil who you want, do you want him someone um, who's... Trustworthy or untrustworthy? Trustworthy, of course. Knowledgeable or ignorant? Knowledgeable. You're looking for these characteristics for that wakil. Mm -hmm. Because you want him as your rep. Okay. So you want to make sure that he has certain characteristics for you mm -hmm. to place your trust in him. Hasan. Tawakkul is when I recognize that there is no one like my Lord to place the wakala and trust in. There are some car dealerships, they give you the wakala for their car dealership, don't they? Yeah. Why they give that wakala? They trust you. They trust you. You've got an impeccable record. Mm -hmm. Your attributes and the way that you deal with things are second to none. Mm -hmm. No one can come near you. I can have a human who I can trust and place all my affairs as my representatives in their hands. But who is better than Al-Hayy al la yamud? That human being, mm -hmm. yamud. But the one who is the living that never dies. I can place my trust in a representative mm -hmm. who's a great person but sleeps. So when they sleep and I need them at 2 a.m., they're like, bro, you know what? what? I was knocked out, man, yeah, and yeah. I wait till 
7 a.m. because it was emergency, bro. 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m. It was an emergency. No. How about the one? Mm-hmm. Noam affects Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, I place my trust in and I want only one who represents me, the necessary existent who emanates to all of us mercy and who is the living that does not die and who is the one who is not affected by sleep. Mm-hmm. Asiya, Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, I'll be your, your Lord. Have tawakkul in me. Mm-hmm. She said, no, the Lord of Musa. I said, why? I said, I've seen you fall asleep. Lord of Musa is always awake. <laughs> true? True. Very true. Very true. There are some people we want to place all our trust in. He's like, bro, Allah was knocked out. But bro, I needed you. I was knocked out. Mm-hmm. There are some I want to place my trust in. But he says, I don't know enough people in that area. But there's one who knows everyone in that area. He That's created it. everyone in that area. So therefore, tawakkul is that recognition of a trust in a Lord who is the living that does not die. The all knowledgeable. He is omnipresent, omniscient. Is there any one greater to put one's trust in no. than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, would you be my wakil if I wanted to get married? Uh, no. <laughs> but that's a sign of my, maybe, ignorance. <laughs> now, Sayyidina, no, when you speak about resetting oneself, w- what does Islam say about reprogramming and, you know, reprogramming one's system? Well, there's many different ways, you know, but... Um, One thing that Islam always says is that the door for reprogramming is always open. Mm -hmm. Imam Musa had a lovely discussion on the concept of muhasaba. Okay. Whoever does not audit themselves, muhasab nafsa, muhasaba. Muhasab is the accountant. Yeah? Yeah. Whoever doesn't audit themselves once a day, is not one of us. You want to be a true Shi'i? Mm-hmm. You audit yourself once a day. Mm-hmm. You audit yourself once every day. day. Yeah. I have to reflect on myself. Now is a great time. Because now there are so many people who are just sitting at home and they're just baffled. What do we do? We can't go out. And many are just sitting there just going through their WhatsApps or articles on the internet. Now just reflect on where you are. Muhasaba is a wonderful spiritual gift. You know, there are some schools in Islam who revere personality by the name of Harith Mm al-Muhasibi. He is seen as a a man of spirituality in certain schools. But look at his name, Muhasibi. Muhasibi, yeah. Now when he is known as Al Muhasabi is because he was always someone who would perform muhasaba. Mm-hmm. He'd always think about and audit his account. Mm-hmm. Let me reprogram. Today, did I read any Quran? Okay, when Corona was not there, I'm at work in the office non stop. Mm-hmm. I've got my business, I'm traveling. Now I'm not doing much. Did I read? If I'm not reading, does that mean I have a problem with the Quran? Mm-hmm. Do I find it boring? Mm-hmm. If I do, am I going to return to my Lord on the day of judgment? And he's going to say that I am one of those who the Quran complains about. I call my Imam, the Imam of my time. Assalamu alayka ya sahib al-asr wa zaman Assalamu alayka ya khalifa al-rahman. Assalamu alayka ya sharik al-Quran. My Imam is the partner of the Quran. Let me account and audit myself. When I've got this free time now, why don't I pick up the Quran? Why is it that some love picking it up and I don't? Mm -hmm. Is there a surah like Taghabun? Have I ever read that surah before? What are the contents of Surah Al-An'am? Why was Surah Yunus revealed? Mm-hmm. What's the background of Surah Al-Hajj? Mm-hmm. Muhasaba 
is when a person sits back and audits and resets all their program. You know, in our iPhone, mm. it says to you, back up. Yeah. You may get a new phone. It tells you, back up, back up, make sure. Now, there's going to be a reprogramming taking place. Mm. This period is a period for us to reprogram. Mm -hmm. Look at different aspects of our life and maybe start afresh. Now, saying that, let's go... Let's go to the treasures of the books that were left behind for us by the Ahlul Bayt They do allude to, you know, times when one falls ill, right? Well, I think when a dua is called mashlul, mm. and all of us are in a bit of shalal at the moment, I'm sure you'll yeah. agree. We're all a bit... Not even paralyzed. Even there's a spiritual paralysis now. Forget physical. Mm. Even there's a mental paralysis. Where you're just a bit confused at the moment. What the next step is. And you don't know what's happening exactly. And I think many of us are affected by this at the moment. Dua Mashlul literally is speaking about someone. Who's really oppressed his father. Mm -hmm. Committed many sins, but also been oppressive to his father until he's overtaken by a problem with his physical body. Mm -hmm. And the king of supplication, when you are affected by a virus or a disease or some sort of impediment to your physical Health is Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Why? Because he is the gate to the city of the knowledge of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Imam Ali alayhi salam gave him that dua straight away. I know somebody, and I want this for all the viewers. Mm -hmm. In 1993, he got cancer, throat cancer. Mm. 1993. In the early 90s, if you got cancer, it's not like today. Mm -hmm. Early 90s, yeah. still, there was this idea that you're going to die very soon. And they even told him that you're going to die very soon. He lived until 2016. MashaAllah. I asked his family how. I know my Lord, and may you jibul mutharada da'ahu yakshubu su'ah. But now if I hear that someone, for example, has cancer, mm -hmm. someone has the coronavirus, what should they read? They said to me, from the day he was told he had throat cancer, until the day he passed away, 22, years. 23 years later, he read Dua Mashlul of Imam Ali alayhi salam every single day. People underestimate the power of the supplications of the Ahlul Bayt, especially Dua Mashlul. Mm. When I see somebody who is in a very difficult physical predicament, I look at him and I say, Hada Mashlul. Mm -hmm. Normally in Mashlul, we may look at someone who literally, they might have been affected by a stroke or paralysis yeah. or whatever. Sure. But in this day and age, a person with the coronavirus can really find themselves not breathing properly. Mm. There's extreme difficulty. Dua Mashlul, this person in his dream, after Imam Ali gave him the dua in his dream, saw the Holy Prophet touch the area of his body where he wasn't feeling well, he got up from there. Mm -hmm. And he had been fully cured. Therefore, that dua, dua Mashlul, is definitely a dua which if you know somebody who's affected by a particular physical impediment, physically challenged, mm -hmm. read dua Mashlul from Imam Ali alayhi salam. Now, you, uh, let's talk about Dua Mashlul. Now, in Dua Mashlul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name is mentioned a lot. Is there a spiritual cure in it or a positive energy that comes from it? Now, I always say, you know, try and recite Allah's names. Like in Dua Mashlul, like in Dua Joshan al Kabir, mm. keep repeating God's names. They have a spiritual effect and a physical effect on our bodies as well. Um, dua Mashlul, it was said that. <clears throat> recite this dua for it has Allah's greatest name in it. Mm -hmm. 
And dua Joshua al Kabir, which came to us from the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family. Another dua where you see Allah's names continuously mentioned. Without a doubt, there is a cure in the recital of these names. Now, in the last episode and this episode, we touched upon dua Yastashir. What's the origin of that dua? Uh, dua Yastashir was taught by the Prophet, peace be upon his family, to Imam Ali alayhi salam. Mm -hmm. And that dua is a dua for people, again, similar times to this. When you're going through a time of trials and tribulations and calamities, mm -hmm. recite dua yastashir. Mm -hmm. So that dua came to us from Imam Ali al-Islam. It was taught to him by the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, his family. Very highly recommended in this period of time. But Sayyidina, we can't not look at a sahifa sajjadiya by Imam Zain al-Abidin salam You know, the dua number seven, it says... O oh, he through whom the knots of detested things are united. O oh, he through whom the cutting edge of hardship is blunted. O oh, he from whom is begged the outlet to the freshness of the relief. Intractable affairs yield to thy power. Means are made ready by thy gentleness. By thy gentleness. The decree goes into effect through thy power. And all things proceed according to thy desire. By thy desire they follow thy command without thy word and by thy will obey thy bands without thy prohibition. Thou art the supplicated in worries and the place of flight in misfortunes. None of them is repelled unless thou repelst. None is removed un uh, unless thou removes. Upon me has come down, my Lord, something whose weight burdens me and upon me has fallen. Something whose carrying oppresses me. Through thy power, thou hast brought it down upon me. And through your authority, you have turned it toward me. None can send away what you have brought me. Mm. None can deflect what has returned, what you have returned. None can open what you have closed. None can close what you have opened. None can make easy what you have made difficult. None can help him whom you have abandoned. So bless Muhammad and his household. Open for me, my Lord, the door of relief through, the great, through your graciousness break from me the authority of worry by your strength. Confer the beauty of your gaze upon my complaint. Let me taste the sweetness of benefaction in what I ask. Give me from yourself mercy and wholesome relief. And appoint for me from yourself a quick way out. Distract me not through worry from observing your obligations. And acting in accordance to your prescriptions. My capacity has been strained. My capacity has been straightened my lord. By what has come down on me and I am filled with worry by carrying what has happened to me. While you have power to remove what has afflicted me and to repel that into which I have fallen. So do not, so do that for me. Though I merit it not from you, O possessor of the mighty throne. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, you'll notice in that supplication mm. there are certain words. Mm. which reflect the current state of the world with coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Worry, hardship, questioning our capacity to deal with these hardships. Imam Zain al salam, nobody saw hardship like he did. And if you're going through difficulties now, mm -hmm. always hold on to Zain al abidin and what took place in Karbala and Kufa and Sham. Mm -hmm. I think the beauty of a Sahih Sajjadiyya is not only is it the Zabur of Al Muhammad, yeah. salamu alayhim, not only is it the Psalms of the Prophet's family, but also it comes from the psychology of a man who highlighted to you how to maintain your mental health. Mm -hmm. When all around you are losing theirs. All around us are in a state of panic, yep. fear, worry, despair, despondency. The embodiment of the one who has Allah is that he is not affected by what's around him because he knows that hardship can be blunted by Allah. 
100%. You saw that line. Yep. The edge of hardship is blunted by God. Mm -hmm. You can put whatever hardship you want, Allah if you want. He'll blunt it. Yep. And what resonates in this dua, dua number seven of a Sahifa Sajjadiya, is that there is a trust in God, a trust in God's plan, mm -hmm. which I think is vital because taslim, submission to Allah's will, and rida, acceptance of whatever comes in our way are not easy. Yeah. They're not easy. No. There are many out there who say I'm a mu'min or a mu'mina, but I would always say sabr, taslim, rida, and tawakkul. If mm. you can master these four, you're at the height of spirituality in Islam. Mm -hmm. Steadfastness, trust in God, mm -hmm. submission to God, pleased with God's will. Master these four, in Islam you become called a human. Before that, you're an animal trying to be a human. <laughs> because we're still in the world of Ammara and Lawama. Yeah. A soul which where the conscious is alive, sometimes it's too animalistic, but you want to master spirituality, sabr, rida, tawakkul, taslim. Mm -hmm. With corona, it's difficult. Because with corona, at the moment, people are getting fidgety. Yeah. I can't take this. I don't want to listen to the doctors. I don't want to listen to anyone's advice. I know more than them. With corona, you're not pleased with what's happening in the sense of knowing Allah has a plan it's like, why, why? You know, why doesn't, where's God? Why? Do, in Corona, the trust in God mm -hmm. starts maybe to waver. Yeah. Why has God done this to me and my family? In Corona, the idea of submitting to what God has planned mm -hmm. and saying, I am pleased with your will is not easy. In a Sahifa Sajjadiyya, Imam Zain al abidin highlights to you how to be in those states continuously. Mm -hmm. So therefore, within this dua and other ad'i of a Sahifa Sajjadiyya, there is this constant theme. Be steadfast, be pleased with God's will, submit to God's will, but most importantly, trust what God's doing. Now we looked at the du'as of Imam Ali alayhi salam and the du'as of Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. Um, are there any other du'as or verses in the Qur'an you think that can help the viewers out there who are wondering? Well, I think, you know, in the verse of the Qur'an, as I said, I, I mentioned a verse earlier. And I think if you put these two together, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ Whoever has, is conscious of God's presence in their life, Allah will open all the doors for them. And whoever has trust in Allah, that's enough. Mm -hmm. Those two are sufficient. Now Sayyidina, when you talked about the Qur'an, and uh, I, I think this also applies to Ad'iyya, that you said, do I have something with the Qur'an, against the Qur'an? Why do people enjoy picking it up? Um, people say, how do I ensure that my dua is being listened to and accepted? Because a lot of them want a straight answer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Straight away they see the change. Well, first and foremost, when God says to us, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ وَجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِي When my servant asks you about me, say to them that I am near. I answer the supplication of the supplicant when they supplicate towards me. So first and foremost, Allah is near to us, closer to us than our juggler vein. Don't worry, you know, you may be going around, you know, hospitals, pharmacies, and so have that trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Of course, with the idea of tawakkul comes this idea that you make use of the advice that you're given. You know, you listen to people and then you have trust in Allah. No, you say, well, I have trust in Allah. I don't want to listen to anyone. How do I ensure my supplications are accepted? First and foremost, I pray for others before I pray for myself. There might be someone out there who say, Ya Allah, please protect you know, me and my family. No, no. Ya Allah, protect the Ummah of Muhammad and Al-Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Protect our neighbors and protect me. Pray for others before you pray for yourself. Mm -hmm. That person who famously came to the Prophet, peace be upon his family, said, How do I get my dua accepted? Why are my duas not being accepted? Why are my supplications not being accepted? He said to him, Well, do you pray for others? He said, No, I just pray for myself. He said, Okay, pray for others. And then pray for yourself. Yeah. So the Prophet heard him in the mosque saying, Ya Allah, protect me, protect the Prophet Muhammad, and no one else. 
No, that's not the way to do it. We pray for others before we pray for ourselves. Yes. Hence, in Salat al Layl, Namaz al Sham, this is a period for us to think of 40 others, not just ourselves. Mm. Number two, always recite salawat on Muhammad and Al Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad before you begin that dua. Mm -hmm. You hear always Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. For example, Allahumma inni as'aluka mujibati rahmatik wa azan wa makhratik wal ghanimata min kulli bir wa salamata min kulli ith. Recite the salawat at the beginning. That is fundamental. Mm -hmm. That is something which can really have an effect on all of us. Number three, I think of the utmost importance as well, is that we recognize that even if our dua is not being accepted, we trust Allah's reasoning. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not good, the thing that we're asking for. Mm. There are people who may ask things which are not good for them. And so in the world of Taslim, in the world of Rida, then come in. Do you trust your Lord? Is he Hakim? Do you mm. believe he really is wise? then he's going to ensure that things move in that state of wisdom. I remember seeing something that said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never says no. He either says yes, yes, but later, or I have a better plan for you. Lovely. So, um, Lovely. But saying that, you know, doing good spiritually, do you think that may sometimes have an effect on the, uh, on the energy that's in this world, that's carried definitely, in this world? Definitely. We have a hadith which always, I think, you know, causes goosebumps to anyone who reads it. Mm. When you do good works, I love that person. I am the eyes by which they see. I am the feet with which they walk. Mm -hmm. I am the ears with which they hear. Mm -hmm. Imagine. That when the human does good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes their guide in everything. Subhanallah, yeah. When I hear today that there are groups who are giving out food mm. to the elderly who cannot get to supermarkets, mm. who are giving out medicines to people who cannot afford medicine. Today I heard a lovely altruistic story of a lady in our community who was leaving the supermarket and was asked by somebody, mm -hmm for some particular item which clearly had been sold out and she took out the item from her bag that she had purchased and gave it to the person. When we do good deeds, mm. the spiritual energy on this earth changes. Yeah. We don't realize that the heart of the mu'min is where the arsh of Allah may sit. Mm -hmm. And therefore, our good deeds resonate so much that Allah says, I become the eyes by which you see. I become their ears by which you hear. Meaning that every step you take, I am the one guiding you. I'm the one protecting you. Mm -hmm. These good deeds, believe you me, are part of the whole movement in all of us being strong and secure in a time of difficulty. Mm -hmm. Those of us who put some charity, that helps. Ascent. Those of us who help the elderly, that helps. Mm -hmm. Those of us who listen to the experts, that helps. Those of us who volunteer, that helps. Yeah. I heard, for example, that Gary Neville and Ryan Giggs. Mm -hmm. And you know this is a time where we're all, you know, in a state of... Um, community when I'm mentioning those two names. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, there's no way I'd mention those two in any other occasion, but mm -hmm. I heard that Gary Neville and Ryan Giggs, they own a hotel and they've made that hotel available for the NHS because the hospitals don't Amazing. have enough spaces. Amazing. All of these deeds are good deeds that begin to change the energy of the world. And why doesn't the Quran Allah SWT says, I will not change a group of people until they change from themselves. This is a key spiritually to how we're going to get out of this mess. One of the keys. There's a number of keys. Yep. But when people say, why are we in this mess? Some of us will say this is God's plan. But some will say, why are we in this mess? Okay. Allah will not change a group of people until they change from themselves. Mm -hmm. I want every viewer to understand one thing. I heard that air pollution's down. Yeah, I was going to mention that. And I heard that car pollution's down. Mm -hmm. I heard that water pollution's down. It turned out that we were the virus and corona was the cure
Makes we are the ones who are destroyed. We're the virus. We didn't care that there were fumes that they were killing the habitat and the wildlife. Mm -hmm. We didn't care about the noise that was being caused. We didn't care about water and the destruction of certain parts of the most beautiful areas in the world. No one cared anymore about areas where there was snow and glaciers and polar bears and no one cared about the climate change. So when air pollution is reduced and water pollution and noise pollution <coughs> and the transport pollution, it turned out that we were the virus and corona was maybe the cure. Mm -hmm. Now if we can all change from ourselves, we come back to our original primordial nature Whereas human beings, we thought about God and the soul and morality. These three are fundamental. Mm -hmm. Metaphysics, ethics, psychology. Come back. Let's go back to these sacred sciences and rebuild our souls, purify our souls. This will bring an energy that is much needed. Ahsan Sayyidina. Now Sayyidina, we are going to take uh, some questions from the day viewers. Um, there, there have been so many coming in since the ones we spoke about. Um, Abbas from Switzerland says, Sayyidna, people being at home can also cause fights, getting on each other's nerves. How do we deal with this? <laughs> classic. I think, classic. I think virus or no virus, that's <laughs> happening yeah, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're always going to have a younger brother or younger sister or sibling who you may have, or you might always hear your mom and dad have a fight all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. You know, that's happening anyway. I think the environment that we should always have at home, you know, A'udhu Billah Min Ash-Shaytan Ar-Rajeem, that should be said always, and the Qur'an should be played in the house as well. This brings good energy into our houses. Um, this next question comes from Hanan from Lebanon. She says, Sayyidna, how can the parents and kids uh, build spirituality at this time? You know, this is a great time to be innovative, and I think, mm -hmm. you know, that there's... Um, there's a lot of good books being written at the moment for children to study. And it's a great time for parents and children to sit together and may, maybe, you know, help in their reading of the Quran, help in their reading of the Ziyarat of Ahlul Bayt, build them up on the love of Ziyarat Ashura, you know, in this period. Um, talk to them about the occasions that are taking place. You mm -hmm. know, on Friday is the night of the Wilad of Imam Al Hussein. Talk to them about Imam Al Hussein. Mm -hmm. Saturday, Imam. Um, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas on Saturday, Imam Zainal Abidin on Sunday, alayhi wasalam. We're coming towards the birth of our 12th Imam, Hajjad Allah Farajah al-Sharif. This is a period where we can sit together with them. We can even make a timetable. But the most important thing is that this timetable doesn't just end when everything, inshaAllah, is, is cured and everything is back to normal. Mm. Try and make it something which you can all continue to build together. Make it routine, yeah. Um, Zainab Fahmi from Australia says, Sayyidna, Netflix can be addictive. Can you blame one for being on this all day? And how does one substitute that for something more productive? Well, I don't blame her for, you know, being in a state of uh, <laughs> being addicted to some of these uh, films or shows on Netflix. Yeah. Um, again, we're not telling people that, look, you can only pick up the Quran for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Uh, or you can only read, for example, uh, a book like Nahj al-Balagha for like 12 hours. All we're saying is just try and slowly, you know, change a bit of the routine. Maybe pick up a book for 20 minutes, half an hour. Maybe read 50 ayahs of Quran a day. As I said, Muhasaba, Imam Musa al-Kalam says, the one who does not account themselves um, once a day is not one of us. Re-establishing that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yeah. the Ahlul Bayt. Um, this one, Malik from Denmark says, Sayyidna, all I think of is death, and I don't think I'm ready uh, for this. Any second this could end, what do I do? Malik, thinking about death is not a bad thing at all. You know, as I said earlier, we are surprised that those who think about tomorrow's meal and don't think about a whole eternity of the hereafter. Mm -hmm. Um, but once again, don't worry, you know, um, you can only be scared of death like when you're scared of an exam. If you haven't revised for an exam, you're scared mm. of the paper. But if you revise, you can't wait to turn it over. Likewise with death, you've done enough deeds, you tried your hardest to get closer to the Lord, done it with sincerity, um, there's nothing to fear. Uh, this one comes from Salman from Finland. He says, uh, 
spirituality Sayyidina is important but also looking after our physical health um, some of us are losing our shape what would you advise <laughs> and not some of us many of us are losing our shape um, <laughs> However, you know, and as I said, just try your hardest to have maintenance. No one's saying go to the extreme um, levels that you may have been reaching in the gym. Maintenance. And maybe now is the time to, as I mentioned, Shah Ramadan is the month in which fasting is obligatory. Mm -hmm. But why not try to fast in these wonderful nights? Like today was the 27th of Rajab. Mm -hmm. Try and have this fasting. It can really help balance the physical and the spiritual. Ascent. Um, Yusuf from Trinidad and Tobago He says, Sayyidina, should we read the du'as in Arabic or can we read it in English? I think that's a very important question for everyone out there I think both are beneficial I really do I, Arabic is the language of the Quran And a person should have no excuse for not being able to re read Arabic mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter what age you are It's never too late to learn Seek knowledge from the cradle to the Grave, um, but if also I think le reading the translation is very beneficial. There are many who've recited Dua Kumail, for example, on Thursday night for many years without knowing what it means when it says, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, and the words on Bala, for example. So, you know, Bala and the Makruh and Ithar, all of these are definitely related to what we're facing with the coronavirus. It's mm -hmm. a period of trial and tribulation, calamity. And I recognize that my Lord has pushed so many before this one away from me. Mm -hmm. But if I don't know what those words mean, then I just read Arabic and I'm just like, إِلَيْكَ يَا رَبِّ نَصَبْتُ وَجْهِ وَإِلَيْكَ يَا رَبِّ مَدَتُ يَدِي فَبِعَزَّتِكَ اسْتَجِبْ لِي دُعَائِي وَبَلِّغْنِي مُنَائِي وَلَا تَقْطَعْ مِنْ فَضْلَكَ رَجَائِي وَكْفِنِي شَرِ الْجَنِّ وَالْإِنْسِ مِنْ أَعْدَائِي يَا سَرِعَ الرَّضَى And I'm reading this Arabic no, and I don't know what it means. Whereas when I know what it means, it makes a huge difference. So I think both are beneficial. Uh, Sayyidina, we are short of time, but these, quickly squeezing these questions. Uh, Kumayt from Brighton says, uh, Sayyidina, I miss the mosque and feel that spiritually I'm so low. Uh, there's no ziyara, no nothing. Are there any tips from you? Well, I think it's a great state to be in that you miss the mosque. So don't worry about your spirituality. There mm -hmm. are some people who don't come to the mosque except in Muharram. So for you to miss the mosque in Shahar Rajab is amazing, Kumail. There's nothing to worry about. There's a lot of online broadcasts. Um, just tune in. Yeah. Uh, this one says, uh, this one's anonymous. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyid. How can I, as a female teenager, Help my community during these difficult times in terms of facing this virus, especially the elders in my community who are mistreated and isolated due to the pandemic. I think either go to the mosque committee and ask them what work they're doing to help and if they need any volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, the organizing committee of any mosque normally will have uh, a committee that seeks to help the elderly citizens, the old age citizens in our community. Um, otherwise, your local youth groups, you know, try and find out from them if there's any initiatives um, where you can be of service. Ahsantum Sayyidina, thank you very much for this beautiful episode on the coronavirus part two. Uh, amazing. Um, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Do follow us on Instagram and our Twitter. Uh, we do post constantly on there. Uh, but as Imam Ali alayhi salam says, the true believer is one who learns lessons from what he sees, ponders over things when he is silent, mentions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he speaks, thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he's rich and becomes patient when a trouble befalls him. He is near to satisfaction and far from discontent. He is pleased with the few gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and does not show frustration for the troubles, for the many troubles. His good intentions are too many to be applied. He intends a lot of good but can do only a part of them and sighs for the good deeds that he missed. Imam Ali alayhi salam. Thank you very much for tuning in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم
the Ziyarat Ashura recitation campaign for the relieving from various kinds of disasters and diseases. Mam Hussein Media Group invites all the believers all around the world, men and women, to join this campaign and supplicate the Almighty Allah as well as resorting to the gate of salvation, Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. Join this campaign by reciting Zirat Ashura daily and intending Imam Sahib Zaman's safety and his reappearance to be hastened. You can simply join this campaign by sending the words Zirat Ashura and your name through WhatsApp to the Public Relations Department of Imam Hussein TV and start reciting Zirat Ashura for 40 days continuously. You can also invite others to join this campaign and give them the opportunity of joining this universal resorting to Mamun Hussain, peace be upon him. Mamun Hussain Media Group, Public Relations Number, plus 964-774-067-1837. duty towards the preservation and the propagation of the message of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Indeed, one of the best ways to work towards the reappearance of Imam al-Mahdi sharif is through promoting the values of Karbala. Imam Hussain Media Group is the only Shia television network that broadcasts globally in five different languages, Arabic, Farsi, Turkish, Urdu, and English. We are appealing to the lovers of Imam Hussain alayhi salam worldwide to support the channel such that it may continue its global operations. Imam Hussain Media Group is seeking 1,000 partners to pledge to a 14 pound contribution per month. This will allow the channel to sustain its operating costs as we continue to spread the message of Imam Hussain in multiple languages across the globe. You be a part of this great legacy and donate today. You can pledge in two ways. www.imamhussain3.tv slash donate will take you direct to our donation page where you can pledge monthly. Or you can call or WhatsApp us on 00 7931917163. Imam Hussain TV, your gateway to Karbala. Imam Hussein Development and Relief Foundation is a charity set up to help the underprivileged in the holy city of Karbala. We have projects to help orphans, widows, newly married couples, and not forgetting the pilgrims of Imam Hussein. So do something amazing! Be part of the legacy! Come join and support one of our projects! Join us, donate now, www.ihdrf.org. Time is ticking. خدا رحمت کنه همه گذشته ها رو پدر ما رحمت الله علیه گفتن تو خونشون روزه بوده یه وبای اومده بوده که اون وقت گفتن بعدی که تموم شد معروف شد که یک سوم اهل شهر تو وبا مردن حتی اون غسالی که غصب میداد اونم وبا گرفت اونی هم که نماز میت میخون اونم وبا گرفت دیگه مرده ها موندن نه کسی غصب میداد نه کسی دفع میکرد اونی که دفع میکرد مرد که خودش این مزید و با شد اون کوچه میگفتن تو این کوچه خونه ای نبود که یکی دو تا سه تا جنازه اتفاق اشاره کردم به یه خونه یادم گفتن این خونه همشون مرد حسین 
وقت پدر ما میگفتن خونه ای ما یه دونه بچه ازش نمید سعی کنید تو خونه هاتون روزه ما حسین بذارید یه اتاقم که دارید اجاره کردید در هفته یه ساعت روزه بذارید این روزه باب خیره کلید موفقیت موفقیت دنیا و آخرت اگه برای دنیا باشه روزه بذارید تو خونتون بخونید نگید توان نداریم نگید نمیتونیم خونتون رو بی روزه نذارید عجلم نکنید نخواید یه روز که روزه خوندید فردا همین مشکلاتتون اصلاح بشه کلید سعادت Bro, you know I'm trying to ask my parents about this stuff. Bro, do I look like a scholar to you? The stuff that I don't even know about. Where were you? Hey, I just came. Are you so lit? Fuck on. Guys, the fuck the hell wrong again? Yeah, man. Guys, I came across this thing called I've come SOS. No. It's an IHTV. Yeah. You can go on your WhatsApp. Type any question you want about your name on it. It's mad, is it? Wait, wait, wait. You're trying to tell me I can ask any question without mentioning my name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't need to feel embarrassed when I have a question to ask. Nah, don't worry. Go on WhatsApp. Type your questions in about your name. What time does the show start? It's 6:30 p.m. I'm doing. I'm recording. Watch it. Am I ready? Yes, I'm ready. Live. Yeah. Yes, Facebook. Stream's ready. Stream's ready. ready. Zaid Maxson, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, get ready. We're gonna go live. Okay, we're gonna play intro. Playing intro. You got five. Going live. Four, three, three, two, one. Cue. Assalamu alaikum. This is Hussein from London. You are very blessed to be in the holy land of Karbala. Please pray for us and pray for everyone who do wish to go. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Uh, I want to pay my respects to Imam Hussein and Mawla Abbas from my me, my parents, and I would like you. to recite salam and ziyara for Imam Hussain and Mawla Abbas on my behalf. As-salamu alaykum, Ibn Hussain, wa a'alad al-Hussain, wa ashab al-Hussain, wa ansar al-Hussain, labbaika ya Hussain, labbaika ya Ghazi, as-salamu alaykum, wa ahamatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa ala Ali ibn al-Hussain, وعلى أولاد الحسن وعلى أصحاب الحسن We don't need a TV channel because we've got mosques We have Islamic centers that are always open. We have schools teaching Islam. Hijab is part of a school uniform. Islam has come and it's established here in the West. And everyone's happy. They love us, our food, our fashion, our culture. The media is always on our side. We've got plenty of English speakers, plenty of English books. And plenty of places to go and learn in the English language. Let's be real. Let's get active. Be more involved. www.imamhussainfree.tv
السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وابن سيد الوصيين السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك يا ثار الله وابن ثاره والوتر الموتور السلام عليك وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار يا أبا عبد الله لقد عظمت الرزية وجلت وعظمت المصيبة بك علينا وعلى جميع أهل الإسلام وجلت وعظمت مصيبتك في السماوات على جميع أهل السماوات فلعن الله أمة أسست أساس الظلم والجور عليكم أهل البيت ولعن الله أمة دفعتكم عن مقامكم وأزالتكم عن مراتبكم التي رتبكم الله فيها ولعن الله أمة قتلتكم ولعن الله الممهدين لهم بالتمكين من قتالكم برئت إلى الله وإليكم منهم ومن أشياعهم وأتباعهم وأوليائهم يا أبا عبد الله إني سلم لمن سالمكم وحرب لمن حاربكم إلى يوم القيامة ولعن الله آل زياد وآل مروان ولعن الله بني أمية قاطبا ولعن الله ابن مرجانا ولعن الله عمر بن سعد ولعن الله شمرا ولعن الله أمة أسرجت وألجمت وتنقبت لقتالك بأبي أنت وأمي لقد عظم مصابي بك فأسأل الله الذي أكرم مقامك وأكرمني بك أن يرزقني طلب ثارك مع إمام منصور من أهل بيت محمد صلى الله عليه وآله 
اللهم اجعلني عندك وجيها بالحسين عليه السلام في الدنيا والآخرة يا أبا عبد الله إني أتقرب إلى الله وإلى رسوله وإلى أمير المؤمنين وإلى فاطمة وإلى الحسن وإليك بموالاتك وبالبراءة ممن قاتلك ونصب لك الحال وبالبراءة ممن أسس أساس الظلم والجور عليكم وأبرأوا إلى الله وإلى رسوله ممن أسس أساس ذلك وبنى عليه بنيانا وجرى في ظلمه وجوره عليكم وعلى أشياعكم برئت إلى الله وإليكم منهم وأتقرب إلى الله ثم إليكم بموالاتكم وموالاتي وليكم وبالبراءة من أعدائكم والناصبين لكم الحار وبالبراءة من أشياعهم وأتباعهم إني سلم لمن سالمكم وحرب لمن حاربكم وولي لمن والاكم وعدو لمن عاداكم فأسأل الله الذي أكرمني بمعرفتكم ومعرفة أوليائكم ورزقني البراءة من أعدائكم أن يجعلني معكم في الدنيا والآخرة وأن يثبت لي عندكم قدم صدق في الدنيا والآخرة وأسأله أن يبلغني المقام المحبود لكم عند الله وأن يرزقني طلب ثاري مع إمام هدى ظاهر ناطق بالحق منكم وأسأل الله بحقكم وبالشأن الذي لكم عنده أن يعطيني بمصابي بكم أفضل ما يعطي مصابين بمصيبة مصيبة ما أعظمها وأعظم رزيتها في الإسلام وفي جميع السماوات والأرض اللهم اجعلني في مقامي هذا ممن تناله منك صلوات ورحمة ومغفرة 
اللهم اجعل محياي محيا محمد وآل محمد ومماتي ممات محمد وآل محمد اللهم إن هذا يوم تبركت به بنو أمية وابن آكلة الأكباد اللعين ابن اللعين على لسانك ولسان نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله في كل موطن وموقف وقف فيه نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم العن أبا سفيان ومعاوية ويزيد بن معاوية عليهم منك اللعنة أبد الآبدين وهذا يوم فرحت به آل زياد وآل مروان بقتلهم الحسين صلوات الله عليه اللهم فضاعف عليهم اللعن منك والعذاب الأليم اللهم إني أتقرب إليك في هذا اليوم وفي موقفي هذا وأيام حياتي بالبراءة منهم واللعنة عليهم والموالاة لنبيك وآل نبيك عليه وعليهم السلام اللهم العن أول ظالم ظلم حق محمد وآل محمد وآخر تابعا له على ذلك اللهم العن العصابة التي جاهدت الحسين وشايعت وبايعت وتابعت على قتله اللهم العنهم جميعا السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين اللهم خص أنت أول ظالم باللعن مني وابدأ به أولا ثم العن الثانية والثالثة والرابع اللهم العن يزيد خامسا والعن عبيد الله بن زياد وابن مرجانة وعمر بن سعد وشمرا وآل أبي سفيان وآل زياد وآل مروان إلى يوم القيامة يقرأ هذا الدعاء حال السجود اللهم لك الحمد حمد الشاكرين لك على مصابهم الحمد لله على عظيم رزيتي اللهم ارزقني شفاعة الحسين يوم الورود وثبت لي قدم صدق عندك مع الحسين وأصحاب الحسين الذين بذلوا مهجهم دون الحسين عليه السلام
بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم The Ziyarat Ashura recitation campaign for the relieving from various kinds of disasters and diseases. Mamun Hussain Media Group invites all the believers all around the world, men and women, to join this campaign and supplicate